Arjun Walia, many decades ago Werner von Braun's mentor Hermann Obert, the founding father of rocketry and astronautics, also known as the father of spaceflight, stated his belief that flying saucers are real and that they are spaceships from another solar system. I think that they possibly are manned by intelligent observers who are members of a race that may have been investigating our Earth for centuries. Related source, Humans are free be Arjun Walia, January 13, 2021 he wrote these words in, Flying saucers come from a distant world, the American Weekly, October 24, 1954. At the time, academics like Oberth were well aware of the UFO phenomenon, and today the topic has gained even more credibility. Given that multiple governments have now confirmed the existence of these objects, there is no shortage of radar tracking data, video evidence, photo evidence, and high-ranking witness testimony that's now available within the public domain. This seems to be confusing many people, as mainstream UFO disclosure is taking off after a decades-long campaign of ridicule and secrecy. Ex-CIA Director Roscoe Hillencotter Nikola Tesla, who was born before Oberth, also had a strong interest when it came to the idea of life on other planets. Many examples are documenting this fact. For example, in an interview he gave to Time at the age of 75, Tesla stated the following, I think that nothing can be more important than interplanetary communication. It will certainly come someday, and the certitude that there are other human beings in the universe, working, suffering, struggling, like ourselves, will produce a magic effect on mankind and will form the foundation of a universal brotherhood that will last as long as humanity itself. No doubt that contact, communication, and relationships with beings from other worlds would have huge implications and change human consciousness forever. It would truly leave, as I've said many times before, no aspect of humanity untouched. There are many more examples and interesting statements from Tesla which we will get to later, but first I wanted to draw your attention to some declassified Federal Bureau of Investigation documents, FBI, that were kept by the agency about Tesla. The document is a record of an Interplanetary Sessions newsletter, from 1957. The newsletter seems to be a printed promotion of a lecture to be given by George Van Tassel. The newsletter appears to be written by writer Margaret Storm, along with what appears to be her husband, John. What's interesting to ask is, why was the FBI so interested to the point where they documented these meetings, discussions, and gatherings? Why did they keep records of this specific newsletter? Is it because they had a heavy interest in the UFO extraterrestrial phenomenon? Remember, this is from the 1950s, today we now know that governments and intelligence agencies, like the FBI, have had a long and documented interest in the phenomenon. Part of the document reads as follows, Margaret Storm has been assigned to certain work with the space people, as follows, she is writing a book, Return of the Dove, a story of the life of Nikola Tesla, a scientist, and the part his inventions will play in the new age. Much of the data for this book has been supplied to Mrs. Storm through transcripts received on the Tesla set, the radio type machine invented by Tesla in 1938 for interplanetary communication. Tesla died in 1943 and his engineers did not build the Tesla set until after his death. It was placed in operation in 1950 and since that time the Tesla engineers have been in close touch with spaceships. The space people have visited the Tesla engineers many times, and have told us that Tesla was a Venusian, brought to this planet as a baby, in 1856, and left with Mr. and Mrs. Tesla in a remote mountain province in what is now Yugoslavia. Whether or not you believe this is up to you, as there is no real way to verify the claims. The document brings up more related UFO phenomena. As far as George Van Tassel goes, he had a long aviation career, starting with Douglas Aircraft and then moving on to Hughes and finishing with Lockheed. In the early 50s he went public claiming he had contact experiences with people from space. According to him, these beings issue warnings of destruction given humanity's ways along with messages of universal peace. After this, they apparently began instructing Tassel on how to construct a building that could reverse the aging process. It was called, The Integration, and the project consumed all of his time he claimed the instructions for the device came from extraterrestrials from the planet Venus. 
He apparently died of a heart attack shortly before the first demonstration was set to take place. Source 1, Source 2, having studied the lore of the UFO extraterrestrial phenomenon for more than 15 years now, one thing I find particularly interesting are the stories and encounters that involve messages of concern about the direction humanity is needed and the urgent need to change our course to avoid poverty, war, hunger, environmental destruction, and disaster. There are countless examples of this, one of many would be the encounter more than 60 schoolchildren had in Zimbabwe in 1994. Just because the claims in the document cannot be verified, does not mean that Tesla's interest in extraterrestrial communication is not verified. As mentioned earlier in the article, it is, for example, according to the Library of Congress, Tesla claimed to have received radio communications from Mars. They cite an article from the Richmond Times purported to offer an extensive description and commentary of his supposed discovery. As he sat beside his instrument on the hillside in Colorado, in the deep silence of that austere, inspiring region, where you plant your feet in gold and your head brushes the constellations, as he sat there one evening, alone, his attention, exquisitely alive at that juncture, was arrested by a faint sound from the receiver, three fairy taps, one after the other, at a fixed interval. What man who has ever lived on this earth would not envy Tesla that moment? A direct quote from Tesla below, taken from his piece, Talking with Planets. I can never forget the first sensations I experienced when it dawned upon me that I had observed something possibly of incalculable consequences to mankind. I felt as though I were present at the birth of new knowledge or the revelation of a great truth. Even now, at times, I can vividly recall the incident and see my apparatus as though it were actually before me. My first observations positively terrified me, as there was present in them something mysterious, not to say supernatural, and I was alone in my laboratory at night, but that time the idea of these disturbances being intelligently controlled signals did not yet present itself to me. The changes I noted were taking place periodically, and with such a clear suggestion of number and order that they were not traceable to any cause then known to me. I was as familiar, of course, with such electrical disturbances as are produced by the sun, aurora borealis, and earth currents, and I was sure as I could be of any fact that these variations were due to none of these causes. The nature of my experiments precluded the possibility of the changes being produced by atmospheric disturbances, as has been rashly asserted by some. It was some time afterward when the thought flashed upon my mind that the disturbances I had observed might be due to an intelligent control. Although I could not decipher their meaning, I couldn't think of them as having been entirely accidental. The feeling is constantly growing on me that I had been the first to hear the greeting of one planet to another. I was not merely beholding a vision but had caught sight of a great and profound truth. Another example of Tesla's thoughts, in his own words, others, may scoff at this suggestion. Of communicating with one of our heavenly neighbors, as Mars, or treat it as a practical joke, but I have been in deep earnest about it ever since I made my first observations in Colorado Springs. At the time, there existed no wireless plant other than mine that could produce a disturbance perceptible in a radius of more than a few miles. Furthermore, the conditions under which I operated were ideal, and I was well trained for the work. The character of the disturbances recorded precluded the possibility of their being of terrestrial origin, and I also eliminated the influence of the Sun, Moon, and Venus. As I then announced, the signals consisted of regular repetition of numbers, and subsequent study convinced me that they must have emanated from Mars, the planet having just then been close to the Earth. Source, final thoughts It's quite clear that Tesla had a strong interest in extraterrestrial life and attempted communication. It's amazing how he was the first person to develop equipment that could big up on signals coming from space as well as other planets. Today, signals of unknown origin are commonplace in the scientific community, massive radio bursts and other anomalies are commonly detected. We've written about this topic since our inception in 2009, and if you're interested in browsing through our articles on the subject you can do so here. As Tesla alludes to early on in this article, contact has huge implications. It will, and is currently, forcing humanity to look at a broader view of reality and entertain concepts that perhaps once did not fit within the accepted framework of knowledge.
Through all stages of human history, plausible concepts and even ones that are backed by evidence and examples have always faced harsh opposition and resistance, but ultimately acceptance. We are still a very young race and no doubt truths are waiting, out there, for us to discover. One thing is for certain. We definitely do not have our affairs here on planet Earth in order. As we grow it seems the more we question our lives, what we are doing here and why we do it. We seem to continually but our ability to change our world for the better into the hands of others who may not have our best interests at heart. Somehow, someway, it's time for us to take responsibility and begin creating a human experience that resonates with all and is in harmony with Mother Earth. How do we do this? I don't know, but I do know that staying silent, not exploring, and not expanding our consciousness is not the answer. For ages, this idea has been proclaimed in the consummately wise teachings of religion, probably not alone as a means of ensuring peace and harmony among men, but as a deeply found truth. The Buddhist expresses it in one way, the Christian in another, but both say the same, we are all one. Nikola Tesla if you like this video please give us a thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel it is quickly safe and easy. Please hit the bell icon so you will be informed when we come out with other videos.